Welcome back to Crosstalk, a in-depth Bible study, a cross-table discussion about cross-type to- cross topics. I did it two times in a row, but we're going to keep going. That's right. I'm Sam O'Banion. <laughs> this is Nick Fanone. Uh, we've been going through Ephesians. Today is Ephesians 3, 7 through 13. Uh, and so, any, yeah. Yeah. What do you got going on? Good, good stuff in here? So far, so good, I good. think. Yeah, unless uh, someone tells me otherwise. There, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Well, should we jump in? Yeah, let's just do it. All right, so we're looking at Ephesians 3. Uh, we're going to look at the first 13 verses, so... Mm-hmm. Um, I'll go ahead and read those, and uh, we can uh, we can talk across the table. Across table. Very good. Uh, so it goes like this. For this reason, I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insights into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in their in other generations, as it uh, has been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. The mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. To me, though, I am the very least of all the saints. This grace was given. The, to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of, of Christ and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might be, now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purposes that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. Yeah. Lots of fun things going on there. Yeah, I like this section. Uh, I'm going to, spoiler alert, Mm -hmm. one of these verses is my, what I would consider, if somebody said, hey, what's your favorite verse? It'd be in this, one of these is in the list. It is in the list. One of these verses is in your list. Top three is in there. Maybe top one, but I'm thinking about it. So anyway. I'm, I'm willing to bet you're going to point that out when we get there. Well, yeah, well, I'll point it out. Good deal. <laughs> okay, so um, the previous couple of weeks, we've we've kind of gone verse by verse, sort of breaking some things down. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's probably a pretty good plan here. Yeah. But I do want to point something out, and I think it's kind of important for us to organize it, our, our understanding of, of, of this section this way. There's actually two sentences in the Greek yeah. <laughs> in this. And this is really important because a lot of our English translations don't break it up even in paragraphs that way. Or very well. Like yeah. if you read <laughs> verse 1, 2, and 3, it doesn't make coherent sense. Correct. He's like, for this reason, and then he gets sidetracked, and then mm-hmm. he comes back and forth, and you're like, what was the reason? Like, I don't, what were you getting at? Yeah, so yeah. so Paul is Captain Rabbit Trail. <laughs> um, he would fit in with a lot of people, I think, that are probably paying attention to this, yeah. uh, including you and I, probably. Um, but so our, our two sentences, it, it really it's kind of two and then another. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have two massive sentences, one through seven, and then eight through 13, or eight through 12. And then 13 is like this short kind of clarifying sentence. And it really kind of connects to verse two. <laughs> I mean, so, the word so is a le- uh, less fancy therefore. <laughs> like, right, right. If somebody were like, therefore, and they went, can you, what's that mean? And they go, so. <laughs> so, and, and it's the same Greek word. Yeah. Uh, at least it, it is in verse 13, and, and it's important to keep this, this connection. And for this reason, for this reason, for this reason, and, and this is our, our kind of connecting and separating uh phrase that we have uh, mm-hmm. that we have right here and so uh, we'll point some of this out but we start out with this for this reason I Paul a prisoner of Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles uh, interesting phrasing yeah to start uh, already <laughs> yeah for sure mm-hmm. um, yeah it's like introduction redo mm-hmm. like your redux yeah uh, just just in case you forgot mm-hmm. I am Paul uh, and I am writing to you correct as Gentiles in Ephesus Correct. Our English language doesn't emphasize ideas or words very well, at least when it's written. Um, I, I think English is very much an oral language more than it is a written language. Mm. Uh, and in any kind of study in language anyway, there's a reason why it's called language arts and not language science. And I yeah. think we've pointed this out before. Um, but in the Greek, there's ways to write and emphasize. 
and it just translates really weird when we <laughs> bring it to English. So for this reason, I Paul. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But he's making he's making a really declarative uh, uh, statement right here, and it starts out for this reason. And so we need to go. Okay. Well, what reason? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Re- and it is a reference to what's going on. Uh, what we probably talked about the previous week and really the week before. Uh, everything that was set up in, in chapter two. And just so you know, for this reason, um, because of our nearness to God, because of the because of the peace that exists between man and God, um, because of our access to the Father, and that's going to show back up again, and because of this art of reconciliation mm-hmm. that was initiated by God for this, for all of that yeah. being kind and, of one inclusive reason. I was say, and I included like, and the fact that you are co-heirs now, the mm-hmm. fact that you Gentiles are now part of this whole people of the book kind yes. of thing. It lumped into that, like all for this reason is for all of those reasons Correct. more than anything. And that's a big, big deal when mm-hmm. we understand this passage yeah. because you're now talking about family again. Um, I have several red underlining in here and if you haven't watched previous episodes of this go back and uh, at least to the first one and you can see why that's a big deal when we see the words in christ or or kind of in that same motif in the spirit in the father in whatever yeah. is 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 a technique that that paul has been using here um and the idea is that we're one big family like your past my past your uh nationality my nationality doesn't matter. You don't have to be Jewish to enter into the kingdom of God. You don't have to be Gentile to enter into the kingdom of God. You have to be a person of faith. <laughs> and so w- when you're when you're making that uh, that statement there, that's that's a big deal. And we're going to see how this all kind of just weaves in in some of these places. Um, but what do we learn of Paul here? <laughs> yeah, in chains, prisoner for Christ, for Christ Jesus. Yeah, yeah, and he even kind of references why back uh-huh. to what you talked about this couple weeks ago of on behalf of you Gentiles because of, again, previous episodes, we talked about how he was accused of bringing a Gentile in. I think this was actually mm-hmm. last week. Probably My, something probably. like that. <laughs> but he brought in a Gentile, supposedly a Gentile mm-hmm. into the temple, which is a big no-no yeah. for Judaism. Sure. And so he's effectively, he's kind of summing up like what's going on in his present life and why. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a prisoner now because, not, I was going to say, because of you, but <laughs> for your sake. On, on, on your behalf, because yeah. of the, the ministry that I'm doing. Yeah. Now, this is a big deal uh, because, uh, first of all, Ephesians is one of the prison epistles. Mm-hmm. And what we mean by that is that it was, it was one of the letters that Paul wrote to one of the churches while he was imprisoned in Rome. Um, now, Someone who would have been in Paul's position, we would not have expected them to phrase it the way that he did. Mm. Uh, if you are a prisoner, you're not going to say, like, I'm a prisoner of God or I'm a prisoner of Christ Jesus, yeah. right? You would expect him to say, I'm a prisoner of Caesar mm-hmm. um, or I'm a prisoner of Rome. And that's not how he sees his current situation. Uh, I, so just kind of pastorally speaking, right? I, I, how many of us consider ourselves a prisoner of something, right? I'm a prisoner in this job. I'm a prisoner in this pandemic. I'm a prisoner to my phone. I'm a okay. prisoner. Yeah, exactly. I'm Enslaved s- to something. Yeah. And w- we we are kind of missing maybe the work of God that's actually going on mm-hmm. with this. And so, well... Maybe in the situation we find ourselves in, we are imprisoned to Christ. Like maybe God has us there on purpose for this reason, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, and so I, I think that's the, and that's the way that Paul sees this. He does not see his chains as a hindrance. He sees the, his chains as a, a another type of vehicle to unload this mystery that that, that he talks about. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, we squeezed out verse one pretty yeah. <laughs> solidly there. All right, so verse two gets even kind of funkier. <laughs> um, verse two, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you. Now, Paul, you know what happens when we assume. <laughs> Paul. Right. Um, yeah, assuming that you've mm-hmm. heard. I just love that phrasing. Like, just the idea that Paul's like, I'm assuming you know what's going on. Yeah. Like, I'm writing to you, and he's like, 
assuming full well you know why I'm doing this. <laughs> Correct. Now, there's all kinds of things to kind of look into this. First of all, it's worth pointing out in other translations, uh, we're not reading the word assuming. Yeah. ESV uses word assuming. You might read like, if indeed you have heard of my ministry, right? Or if indeed you have heard of this grace, the stewardship of grace mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that God's given to me. Um, just fun fact, only because it's really fun to say, uh, if indeed you have heard or assuming you have heard, the Greek is ege ekusate. Ege ukusate. Yep. Uh, I just think it's fun <laughs> to say. Um, but it's an interesting phrase. Uh, so he talks about this. Uh, the, the ESV says, you've heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you. Yeah, I, I battled with this a little bit. There's going to be a couple of these verses that were just, just gonna... The phrasing of it is so bizarre. It is, like, because I went deep dive into stewardship. Good. Did you too? Uh, a little bit, I, but I, I'm really, really wanting I just, to hear what you have to say. About first this. of all, I was floored when uh -huh. I was like, I read because it's oi, what he uses here is oikonomion, uh -huh. oikonomion, mm -hmm. oikonomion, which is where we get the word economy. Uh -huh. Which I was like, the word stewardship and economy go hand in hand. Like that is a fascinating look into. All sorts of philosophical quandaries, if you look at it that way. Uh -huh. But uh, but it literally comes from, like, oikos, meaning house. And so oikonomias is someone who is a steward or an administrator or a manager of a house. Yes. And we've seen this word over and over and over so far in the, this letter to the, uh, to mm -hmm. the Ephesians. Uh, just translated in different ways because of the context. Yeah. This, it, the root word is oikos, right? Yeah. And then you get you add to... The economy, this economy of God's, mm -hmm. right? Um, so steward, um, it, all that is is a manager, yeah. right? I, I'm, I'm managing what God has given me, and in this case, he considers it grace. Mm -hmm. So it, this begs the question, all right? And I'm going to ask you the question. What is the economy of God's house? Yeah, and <laughs> that's my big struggle was like, he's saying, you've heard that I've been given the managerial position of managing the grace of God, wait, given to me for you. Yeah. It's like I've been given grace and then been prop put up so that I may administer effectively to you. And so just the, I, I still am struggling with it. Let me put it that way. So I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, but I think that's fair because the, because the phrasing is bizarre. The word is bizarre. He has smashed two words together. We're going to yep. see as we go through this that he's actually invented a couple words. Mm -hmm. um, at least there's no record of any of those. And he, he's done this before. Um, I, the the concept in this is because of the chains he's in, right? Mm -hmm. The Gentiles, specifically the ones reading this letter to the, to in Ephesus benefit mm -hmm. right god's economy is something that i was given a managerial position for i paul <laughs> to manage it in such a way that you gentile benefit yeah i'm assuming you've already heard that <laughs> <laughs> right in other words you're receiving god's blessing because of this mm -hmm. right be, be, because of because of that so i would say the way i would say what is god's economy i think god's economy is people oh yeah um and I mean that in the most general and generic way. It's not a specific group of people. We might make the case, based on this context here, that we're talking about the church, but the church is a f fluid currency, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if we're going to kind of stay in that, in that place. We're, it's not stagnant. We, 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 don't, we, don't just, we don't just stay as we are. We are constantly growing. We're constantly expanding were economic mm -hmm. um, and the way that we are spent is for the sake of other people and he's going to and he introduces this idea that he can then carry on and, and, and complete that thought in verse 13 um, which which is my one of my favorite things to, to kind of do this because he, he rabbit trails several times so if we mm -hmm. were to kind of read this whole thought it would go like this if indeed or assuming you have heard about my responsibility or about my stewardship of God's grace, I ask you not to lose heart. Mm -hmm. 
right? That's the that's sort of the complete thought. Yeah, he could have cut out a lot of middle men. Glad he didn't. But it's double stuffed here. Yeah, <laughs> it's double stuffed. So it, it it's to me it's it's pretty fascinating. The emphasis here is on God's grace. Mm-hmm. He considers his predicament as God's grace, mm-hmm. and it's his grace because. God has has bestowed it or, or given it to him, and and because of that, we get to reap the goodness uh, and the favorability of God, not according to chapter two by any way that we've earned, mm-hmm. but by everything that God has done. Um, and when you kind of put this all in this this little household motif, this was my deep dive here. Okay, that God takes care of His house, and we steward that care to those outside of it. Yeah, yeah. No economy has ever <laughs> operated like that. Yeah, we're, yeah. Just if you think of it as like, I struggled when it when I figured out that was how or that was economy. I was like, I need to remember like this is in the setting of a house. Mm-hmm. Like this is, uh, and so I imagine it as people coming in, mm-hmm. and you're like, you're not the host, but you're like equipped to be hospitable all the Mm -hmm. same to allow to help people in the house and that struggle of and and he kind of talks about later of the idea of like i am here to manage to like to facilitate Mm -hmm. to help like that's the whole point of this is i'm in the house helping the house be the house (laughs) correct and you can do it liberally Mm -hmm. right there you, you don't have to pace yourself in that because it's not ours Mm -hmm. right so if i said hey we're gonna go out to eat it's gonna cost you twenty dollars right you would probably pay attention a little bit to what you're ordering to manage that twenty dollars very as frugally as possible Mm -hmm. um, or as wisely as possible but if i were to say here's twenty dollars you don't need to pay me back at twenty dollars this is twenty dollars to spend on food probably going to spend that a little more freer than you did Mm -hmm. with with your own. This economy is not ours. It's something we have been asked to manage. Yeah. And we could do it freely. We we could do it freely to whomever is willing to hear and to whomever is willing to, to participate. Um, so he carries on that, that whole concept there then to, to verse 3, and he, he hits our magic word here too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so how the mystery was made known to me by revelation as I have briefly written. <laughs> All right, verse 3. Yeah, introduction of a kind of this idea. I mean, he says mystery mm-hmm. before this, doesn't he? He did I back in, I was at one... Somewhere, I can't remember where. Yeah. I don't think I wrote, wrote it down either. Um no, I sure didn't. But yeah, I didn't either. But he really expounds on the mystery mm-hmm. portion here, more importantly than anything. Right. Um, my favorite fun fact about the word mystery in the Greek is it is almost literally just mystery. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like we did. Yeah. We didn't even try in English no. with mystery. We were like, you know what, musterion. That's good. We've done that a couple times. Yep. Bap- baptism, baptized, yeah. same type of thing. Baptizo, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Good stuff. But I will say this is also where we get a root for the word ministry, which I thought was interesting. Correct. Um, Because Latin, in Latin, mystery is office or position that one holds, which, again, sent me reeling of, like, Mm. mystery and ministry being connected, and this is the mystery. It's a whole convoluted (laughs) philosophical point. (laughs) So when I did my first internship when Mm -hmm. I was in college, we sat down. I sat down with the guy that I was doing the internship under, he said, all right, what is it you're hoping to gain out of this? And I said, well, I want to know what you do. And he said, well, I, I do ministry. I said, okay, well, I want to know. I, I get it on Sunday, right? That makes sense. What, what do you do during the week? And the answer w- went kind of like this. Uh, it, it, ministry. <laughs> <laughs> because how do you, how do you define that? Because yeah. it's closely connected to the word serve, right? Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's a service. It's a, it really is an, an imprisonment biblically that, that you're, you were in, in chain to what Christ is leading. Uh, it, so this, this mystery, okay, shows up in verse three, shows up again in verse four. Um, I think we're reading again in verse nine, the, the, mm-hmm. this idea. Um, 
and, and it was a it was a mystery that was revealed to Paul, yep. right, so that he can manage it. What's the mystery? Well, I was gonna say we could spoiler alert and jump to where he says the mystery is. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love a good mystery. I love reading a good who done it. I like trying to solve stuff. Yeah. So even thinking about the gospel as a mystery is something that's very enticing to me. I think sometimes we hear this word mi mystery and we get confused a little bit. Um, and I don't think we need to get confused. I think we need to keep it simple. Yeah, I think a lot of times when you, uh, for me, I'll say it for me, I'll read and I'll if I hit a road bump like mystery and I go, what mystery is he talking about? Then I kind of start ruminating on that as I keep reading. Yeah. And I miss the important thing that's coming up in verse 6 where he's like, this mystery is yeah. blank. He yeah. Like goes on. Yeah. It, it, it. I think that his concept here in, in this verse is that, hey, man, I didn't invent this. Yeah. I, I, mm -hmm. I was given this. This isn't something. And who could create this, by the way? Um, and so the fact that Gentiles and Jews are on equal footing in faith is the mystery. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's yeah. essentially what it is. And so we to, the togetherness that we have and we get to experience Christ with this, to me, is sort of like love, right? Well, how do you define love? I don't know, but I know when I'm in it, mm -hmm. <laughs> I know when I'm experiencing it. Um, I, I know kind of some of the things that come along with that, um, but it is, it's a, it's alive. This mystery is, is alive. So uh, when he says that uh, how this mystery is made known to me by revelation, I think in part we go back to Acts 9 and we see his conversion, Yeah. right? Hey, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I've got bigger plans for you. You're going to go do some ministry in a way that no one has ever thought of before. Mm -hmm. uh, it has never even come across someone's mind. That wall that we talked about last week between the court of Gentiles and where Jewish men could enter the temple, you're going to be a major part of knocking that wall down. And here we go. Yeah. And Paul says, look, I made, I've made, made it known to you by what I've written so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Look at these first two chapters. You Gentiles have an identity that is found in Christ given by the Father God. You get to be a co heir. Yeah. And I like that. I like this verse for introducing this idea of mystery, but like what you just said, made known to me by revelation. It's that idea of it's not something I had I could make up. Like it mm -hmm. was shown to me and there's no other way to show it to me but by revealing it to me. Right. Like, but that's a big deal. Oh, it's a huge deal. Yeah, it's a huge deal, especially given Paul's time. Mm-hmm. Because uh, mystery was, was religiously speaking, was something that only a certain person or certain group of people were allowed to have access to. It, right? It's a, almost like, a, to come back to what Paul's about to say, it's almost like access to something. Yeah. Like you have this, a th this uh, idea of an ethereal other. Uh -huh. And so, because that's the mystery, like... The idea of mystery, I mean, there's even mystery religions that are like the idea of uh, religions that develop out of the idea of there is unknown beyond what we can do. And we can worship that or worship in that. Which is how a cult gets started. Yes. Gets started. So, hey, I have access to this supernatural knowledge, mm -hmm. right? The only way you will have access to it is through me. So follow me, do what I say. And you'll, then you'll get to receive some of the blessing of mm -hmm. it. Paul's going, that's not the case here. Yeah. And it's a big deal here because we actually have ancient writings of, that write about the mysteries of Artemis. Mm. And that the priests that led these parades through town were the ones that got to unveil the mystery that they had received from Artemis. And let's be honest, you could just say whatever you want if that's the case. Yeah. I mean, I, I just make it up. Like, Sam, if you want to have this amazing blessing, you got to give me a hundred dollars every day, right? Yeah. Yeah. Give me a hundred dollars every day. And then that su supernatural knowledge is yours. Paul's going, this was something that was given to me. I'm just a vehicle of it. I'm just, I'm just a, a managing the economy of it. And, and this is what it is. And this is what it is. And he said, it's what I've written to you briefly. Yep. I said, go ahead. Uh, no, I was going to say verse four. Yeah. Verse continues. four. So I've, I've written this to you. When you read this, Okay. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ. You'll get to know everything I know mm -hmm. when you read this. And by the way, when you read this, is probably a public reading. Yeah, right. For sure. Yeah, all at once. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You'll you, you and you'll receive this insight, 
And the word insight means you, you'll have the, you'll have the same understanding that I do. Mm -hmm. I have nothing that you don't have access to. Um, that's pretty unique. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> it is the whole concept of um, like the greatest will become the least, right? And Paul just kind of demonstrated that. Yeah, I'm putting you on equal footing. Yeah. Just by hearing this. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. How I got it, you have access to it as well. Mm hmm. Yeah. Good deal. All right. So five. Okay. So when you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, mm -hmm. which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets in the spirit. This is where my head kind of went. Okay. <laughs> what, what do we do here? What do we do here? All right. So this, it was once this way and now it's this way. Mm -hmm. Well, what's he talking about here? <laughs> when you see this, what are some things that kind of stick out? I mean, just the, I mean, the idea that the living in the darkness for so long without Christ, mm -hmm. like missing the point of what the law was supposed to do. That's when I read this, yeah. that was what my first thing was. The law wasn't supposed to be this, uh, governmental style that just helped lead a nation. It was supposed to be a way to connect with God mm -hmm. through forgiveness of sins, through holiness and so on. Mm -hmm. And basically he's like, yeah, but it was the law wasn't supposed to be an exclusive governmental system. It was supposed to be an inclusive, like join them if you got them kind of thing. Yeah. And he's like, so this wasn't made known. Like people didn't understand that this was going to be an inclusive but there's a reason why they didn't understand. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The, the reason, aside from the sinful nature of man, okay, and that can be a whole another deep dive later on if we wanted to. The reason why it wasn't made known is because of God's timing. Yes. And his revealing. All right. Now it's been revealed. And in that one line in verse five, he puts the prophets. So talking about time before Christ, mm -hmm. right alongside the apostles, meaning now that Christ is showing up. Yeah. yeah. So BC, AD, right? We, mm -hmm. we are now on this whole thing. And because of that, we Gentiles, our, our history is now connected to the prophet, the history of the prophets, mm -hmm. right? And I think we talked about that before. Yep. Yeah. So the prom, and we're, we're, we're going to see this pop up too, the promise of Abraham is now our promise as Gentiles, right? Mm -hmm. But it does beg the question because he says it wasn't made known uh, to those in the other generations, but it's now been revealed uh, really to anyone who steps in faith in this. Um, I, I wrote this down, so I want to read this. Is he saying that nothing was nothing of this mystery known prior to the arrival of Jesus? Or is this a comparative type thing? Was, was some of the mystery known previously, but now it's just been totally revealed. Yeah. Right. That's sort of an important question. Mm -hmm. I think. I don't know. Yeah. I would say, I would argue that it's the latter mm -hmm. simply because we have prophecy fulfilled. And so it's, uh -huh. it seems to be uh, even epige epigenetically, which fancy word for multiple fulfillments. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I, I think it is this idea of uh, I gave you a shadow of what was to come, mm -hmm. and now I'm giving you the full picture. Okay, so that's explicitly written in the book of Hebrews. Yes. Right? <laughs> so the Mosaic Law was a shadow um, or was a uh, kind of a first thing of bigger things to come. Yeah. Right? Very, uh, I'm going to throw out another big word, very Platonic, Plato. Uh, in the go. cave. There you go. If you want to look up Plato in the cave, you can do that. I, we won't talk about that now because we'll be here for a while. We would be. Okay, let me give you these references here. Okay, right? hit me. Okay, Genesis 12, 3, 22, 18, 26, 4, 28, 14, Isaiah 2, 1 through 4, 11, 10, 49, 6, 60, verses 1 through 3, Jeremiah 3, 14, Zechariah 8, 20 through 23, and Zechariah 14, 16 through 19. All of those references are talking about the inclusion of Gentiles in the blessing or the promise mm. of God. I tend to lean toward the latter too, that, that some of this was revealed or at least a, a light was 
the was a there was a dimmer on it, and now the dimmer or the shade has been removed. Yeah, and we have full access to that light. Um, and it happens th- we read through Christ Jesus, mm-hmm. right? done by the Spirit. So once now, um, so once it, w- it, it then it the way we had access was like this, but now we have access like this. Then we had the law. Well, now we have the fulfillment of the law. We get to ride that wave. Mm-hmm. Um, then it was a the the structure of the manner in which that was received was you needed to become this. Then you get this, and now it's doesn't matter who you are. You have access to this, and then this whole concept of being near God was such a foreign thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you couldn't be near God because you'd die. <laughs> multiple occasions. Multiple yeah. occasions. Yeah, Cite it, your sources, multiple occasions. Yeah, you, you got to wrap a rope around the high priest who <laughs> was going to perform that one act a year. Yeah. Um, just in case he died, you could pull him out. Um, that doesn't happen now. But a- access to God uh, is either good news or bad news. Fair, right? yeah. Depend, and it depends on where you sit on this promise. It depends on where you sit on this. And it was all the agent of all that is the Spirit of God, mm-hmm. um, which is awesome because, like we said last week, it's not the circumcision. It's not the obedience of the law. It's not being this kind of pious, um, holier-than-thou type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not who you, what family you were born into. It's what family you are reborn into. Yep. Um, so... We get to verse 6. This is where Paul is kind of, this is peak Paul, full on Paul. The mystery is no longer mysterious. Yes. Because <laughs> yes. the mystery is revealed. <laughs> the, the, this mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, <laughs> members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the good news or through the gospel. Good times. Yeah, it's it's like uh, he danced around that for mm-hmm. two and two quarter chapters, and he's like, "Let me just, I'll just spell it out. Yeah. Here's what we're doing. <laughs> Here's what we're doing." But not only that. Okay, this is why I say it's peak Paul because he, this guy, makes up some words, man. <laughs> he he, there's a there's a definite play on words here. So the Greek word soon, okay, mm-hmm. s s u n in English. Um, kind of has a threefold meaning. Uh, so soon is where we get the word fellow or fellowship um, or f- friend or t- there's a togetherness aspect to it. Um, and he uses it three ways here. Okay. So this mystery uh, is that the Gentiles are, here's our word soon, fellow heirs. Okay. Then members of the same body is one word, mm-hmm. <laughs> one word that he invented. <laughs> All right. I looked this up. Let's talk about deep, deep dive here. Yeah. Paul created this word by smashing some words together. Susoma, all right, which means fellow body. <laughs> all right? Yeah. That we, the, the Gentiles are part of the same body as Jews. That the sinner is part of the same body as the Holy One, mm-hmm. right? Because there's nothing we can do to make that. So he makes that up. And then I don't know that he made this next one up, Um but the thought of it was certainly something he's the first to use, to use and it's this the and partakers of the of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. It's sharers of the promise as one word, right? So we're sharers of the promise, and then here's the phrase we underline in red: in Christ Jesus, which by the way is the good news. Yeah. yeah here's the good news: you don't have to become something different in order to become God's. He makes you something different. He has given you purpose and given you intent. And Paul is just full on Paul. God's people are now identified by their togetherness. Yep. Right. Yeah. And again, hitting on all those classic themes, fellow heir, a part of something, uh, inheritance, partakers of the promise. Mm-hmm. That's an idea of receiving something that was guaranteed to you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, classic Paul, some more through uh-huh. his just repeating of themes. As we mentioned every week, the repetition of themes is always something important. That's right. So say it, say it again, say it one more time. And then the repetition of themes is very important. <laughs> exactly. Um, so he, 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 he really nails this together and that's the identifying thing, right? Mm-hmm. That's the mi- mystery. We, we have this identity and the identity is the togetherness. We should never take the togetherness of the church for granted. Yeah. Never take. Like this, 
this Christian life is not supposed to be experienced alone. And I say this full, fully aware that there's probably folks listening in on this that um, feel like they need to be quarantined or be isolated with that. And it's also one of the reasons why I hate the term social distancing, because I don't think we are supposed to socially distance. Maybe physical distancing, yeah. okay? But social distancing has a connotation to it, and I think some of us have kind of bent into that connotation. We're supposed to be socially together. Yeah, uh, I, I appreciate that. Just through the derivation of language, like social distancing implies don't socially, like yeah. even talk on the phone. <laughs> like, Possibly. Yeah. But phys- physical distancing, mm-hmm. yeah, then I'm not going to go to your house, but I'll still call you on the phone or I'll still stay in contact yeah, with someone. Yeah, we do life Social. together. Yeah. yeah. that And that's so critical that you aren't supposed to be doing this thing by yourself. Like, we aren't supposed to have a court of Gentiles anymore. We're not mm-hmm. supposed to have a court of uh, women anymore. We're not supposed to have the inner court where the Jewish men can walk into. Um, you and I, just because we work for a church, we don't have special access <laughs> to anything that yeah. anyone else doesn't have access to. Don't get to, to go behind, like, just because we go behind the curtain on the stage doesn't mean that, like, if somebody said, hey, can I see backstage? We'd go, no, it's just for pastors. Yeah, like, exactly. It's like, sure. I mean, it's just messy. It's a giant closet <laughs> yeah. is, is what we're looking at here. So it, 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 I, I can't emphasize this enough because Paul it, it repeats this over and over and over. And he calls it good news, right? Mm-hmm. And he ends this first major sentence like this in verse 7. Of this good news or of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. Loaded ending to this sentence, mm-hmm. right? Loaded ending. Just I, I picture Paul doing this after he wrote that because I think it's probably just engraved in, in, in how, how he did this. Yeah. Um, so the Greek of this, again, is more nuanced than our English is. Um, the grace of God that was given to me uh, is, is uh, so you can actually look at, at verse 2, the same type of thing, uh, God's grace that was given to me for you. Mm. It's, it's, this, it's a technique called inclusio. Right, so sort of our bookend idea. Mm-hmm. So, so the sentence started with grace of God that was given to me. The sentence ended with grace of God that was given to me. Right. Yep. Um, and it, it, Paul calls it a ministry, which, by the way, has the root word. The, the word used here has yep. the root word oikos again. Yep. Okay. So tied to that household, this the the divine household or the divine economy, um, and he calls it a gift. How many people do you know that do ministry call it a gift? I mean, because they're quoting the Bible or because they actually consider it a gift? I'm talking about in their heart of hearts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In their heart of hearts, think of it as a gift or as a way of tasting and partaking in God's grace. Not as many as ought. Let me put it that way. Yeah. Well, let's consider Paul again. Yeah. Right? He's... he's chained somewhere, mm-hmm. right? We know he's in Rome. We don't know the extent of it, but we know at the end of Acts, he's chained to a soldier, mm-hmm. uh, probably chained up in a room that he's writing. He at least is able to get this out, this letter out, or maybe someone comes to visit him that he sends with them. He has no idea if this is going to land anywhere. If it's the same time he's imprisoned when he writes the book of Philippians, the book of Philippians, he talks about, it's possible I'm going to die here, mm-hmm. right? And it's a gift. Yeah. And it's, a, it's this, this blessing, this enslavement, this imprisonment, this life of service, this ministry, he considers a blessing. Um, I, I think that's kind of powerful. Yeah, and he considers it a gift and realizing who the giver is mm-hmm. in the same way. Because, like, yeah. if I get a bad gift, mm-hmm. I can be gracious but be like, well, this guy. Like, yeah. Why would you give me this? This is crazy. Uh, and he still says given to me by his power. Like, this is God's grace given to me by power. Like, yeah. just that idea of, like, I am in dire straits, God bless, or bless the giver, yeah. who is God. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so he still hasn't got to his final thought on this, right? Mm-hmm. So we have one more giant sentence that we have to dig into. Verse 8 starts out the sentence. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given. So he's stuck on this grace. Mm-hmm. And here's what the grace is. To preach 
to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches uh, of Christ. This is my favorite verse. Yeah. I, I was wondering if that that's what it's got. It's yep. got all the magic words in it, too. It does, yeah. yeah. I, I mostly resonated with the I'm the very least. <laughs> uh-huh. Sure, sure. And I was still given grace to preach. Yeah. So and not, God bless. Not a foreign concept to Paul, no. right? Uh, he says in other places. Uh, I think to the Corinthians, I think he says it to either Titus or Timothy. Mm-hmm. Um, so it re- repeatedly talk, talks about himself being the least of all the apostles. Um, but there's irony in that. Mm-hmm. Like there's, there's irony in that. The sentence before that ended that the grace that's given to him is the working of God's power. And in that power, I'm the least. <laughs> like I'm the least one who should, who should have this. The irony is because nothing about Paul demonstrated that he should be the one to have this mystery revealed to him. Yeah. Uh, this power unleashed to him. I think there's a lesson in there. I think we need to be very, very careful uh, to not qualify what or who God calls. Mm-hmm. Um, that's tough for me. <laughs> yeah, that's. I wrote down the words humility and meekness. Yeah. Like the idea that anyone can be used. Like there's, there's no limit to the grace and power that God can bestow to send. <laughs> and anyone in any circumstance, mm-hmm. right? Like we don't have to be polished to be used. Mm-hmm. We don't have to be super apostle or super priest or super holy one, right? Yeah. To be used. And I think Paul, I think the rest of the apostles are prime examples of all of that. And I think sometimes we fall into that trap where maybe we're looking for volunteers in ministry or maybe we prevent ourselves from stepping into that because I don't know enough or yep. I'm not good enough. How am I going to talk to them about the Bible when I haven't read the whole thing or Correct. I don't know how to quote it? Correct. Correctly. Or I don't understand it. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, I don't, maybe I, the time, mm-hmm. maybe just the, the tools, may, whatever it is. And God's going, yeah, it, it, I'm the one calling you. It's my power, not yours. Mm-hmm. Um, it's my working, not someone else's. Uh, sometimes we bend to the organization more than we bend to the organizer. <laughs> And that could be our bumper sticker phrase yeah. for the day right there. Um, and then we have our, our f- favorite phrase, the unsearchable riches, right? The, yeah. Go back to riches. You pointed this out last week. Chapter 1, verse 7, chapter 2, verse 7, and now 3, 8. I don't know why we had to make that verse 8. Couldn't have just made 7. <laughs> but we have these unsearchable riches. In yeah. other words, it's constant, more than you can handle, more than you can perceive, more than you can fathom. More inheritance, size, mm-hmm. language. It, look at how much is here. Yeah. yeah. He is always giving. Um, there's never a stop in the giving. So verse 9 continues the sentence, right? So we got to do the run on because this is Paul. And to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. This is a loaded statement here. So bring to light. Uh, we've got our word, Greek word photos, mm-hmm. all right? Uh, to bring to light or to uh, re- um, illuminate maybe is what, what, what uh, other versions say. So he's bringing this to light. He illuminated this uh, for everyone. Uh, the word there is all, actually. Mm-hmm. Right? For all, uh, what is the plan of the mystery? All right? So it, it's weird calling it a mystery because it's no longer a mystery. Yeah. Right? And the way that we discover it's not a mystery is that we step into the mystery. It's, it's just bizarre. But yeah, it, go ahead. I was just going to say, and if you just put that together with verse 8, just mm-hmm. that idea of pre, my preaching is twofold. I want Gentiles to know that they're a part of this, but then I want everyone know, to know that the Gentiles are a part of it. Like, yeah. I need everyone on earth to know what the plan is that was always the plan, but wasn't always known as the plan. Correct. It, it, so if Gentiles are involved, that means everybody's involved, mm-hmm. right? And, and, that, and that's part of it. Part of it. So uh, plan, the Greek word, oikonomia. Yeah. <laughs> which we translated earlier um, as that which, you know, the, the, the stewardship, stewardship of God's divine house is basically mm-hmm. what it is. Now, he's not referring to the stewardship of God's plan. He's referring to the plan itself. Mm-hmm. And the plan itself was God's household was always going to include everyone. This is the unveiling of it, the revealing 
of this. And then he kind of puts this little tag phrase with this, and I don't want to overlook this, and I think we do in the church quite often. Uh, for the ages in God, there's another red underline, mm-hmm. who created all things. This, the way I understand this, is a reason why we can say that he has always included Gentiles. He's been from the beginning. He's always done this. Listen, if God is not creator, then he is nothing in the Bible. Yeah. It starts out with, in the beginning, God created. And if that line isn't true, none of the rest of it is. Uh, whatever creation, whatever the, the source of creation is, that's God. And as God as creator, it's, there's, there's, there's kind of arrows pointing at that all the time. And that's always something that we, that's the hill we want to die on, right? When we are in arguments, when we are in debates, that's something we, we're going to fight. Mm-hmm. Um, we, that's, that's ground we don't give up um, because the source of everything is that God created or is the creator of all things. He's first and foremost creator. Um, that's the only reason why we can call him Father. Yeah. It's the only reason. Um, it's also the only reason why we can uh, need to even spend this time trying to figure out what this mystery is and we'll spend this time figuring out what the law was and what our history to that is. It's the only reason why any of that matters. Yeah. Um, otherwise, we, we just kind of make God whoever we want him to be because we get to be the creator. So that's my kind of plea through... Uh, <laughs> Dude, that's, that's that's the preaching portion of it right here. So, uh, anything else in that verse? No, I think we're good to go to nine. Okay, so uh, that was or nine. Ten. Yeah, <laughs> to bring to light me. everyone, what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God, who created all things? And then verse ten, so that through the church, the manifold wisdom, fun fun word right there, of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This is the one for me. Was, this is the one that I was like, I'm going to be here a while. Yeah. This is going to take too long. Paul, I'm with you. Can't do this. I'm with you. I'm with you. And then what are you doing, Paul? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, yeah. Just so, okay. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Uh, so starting in eight. Yep. To Paul. Yep. This grace was given to preach to the Gentiles that they are co-heirs in uh, the unsearchable riches. Yep. To bring to light the plan of the mystery to everyone, what was hidden in God for creation, so that through the church body, Mm -hmm. the manifold wisdom of God can be made known, but not to us, (laughs) to heavenly places. Uh Lots there. Uh, I know that was, I just did that. To give myself a pause. Yeah, that's okay. And recap. Yep, that's okay. Because that is chock full of what? <laughs> question mark, question mark, question mark. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do any any looking into some manifold? Too? Honestly, I had to first of all I went, oh, I know what manifold means. And I had defined manifold into Google. And I was like, did not think that's what manifold meant. <laughs> so I didn't even know what manifold was. You wanna know what that Greek word is? Uh polopoikilos. Yes. Polopoikilos. Which is two words meaning the same thing. <laughs> it Both means, words mean many. It means many minis. Much and many kinds. Yeah. Right. Much many kinds. So much many kinds wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did Paul... Uh, that's the only time it occurs in the Bible. It's the only time it occurs in the Bible. I, what I, From what I read, it shows up in some other places, but... Probably Paul would have never had access to those. And well, the the only thing I found is when it occurs, it typically means the variety of colors an artist uses. Yes, which is if Paul did is aware of that, Mm -hmm. is such beautiful imagery to describe the wisdom of God. So most likely Paul didn't have access to those writings, but it is possible that those writings would have had access to Paul. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so we could have some borrowing and some kind of pulling and tugging. It's a, the manifold wisdom. It, uh, so I think multifaceted is probably a better word. Yeah. There's a multifaceted wisdom. In other words, it's wisdom that operates on so many levels. Um, and, and God is revealing that. And yeah, I mean, manifold in 
manifold is a hard word mostly because we don't use it anymore Correct. unless you're talking about a vehicle, vehicle. Or a motor yeah um, but yeah just thinking about God's wisdom can be I don't know what'd you just say the multifaceted it, multifaceted it, but it can like go all places to all things and be for all people right. like it's I think of it as like if you uh, had like in the middle uh, core and then it branched out from there yeah and if I drew that on the board, it'd go. I could make like a circle and then a bunch of branches out this way, and they could go all these different places. But the like the much minis to me, it has to be three D. It's like a ball of branches mm-hmm. that expands out for an eternity. Yeah. So eternal's the big yeah. kind of thing with that. That so go back to the previous verse talking about the unsearchable riches, mm-hmm. right? Well, that the unsearchable riches is God's multifaceted wisdom. Yeah. How's the world going to know about that? Uh, yeah. Through the church, yeah, through the church, yeah, through our togetherness. We, okay, so this idea of to the powers, yes, right? to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places, which again he says heavenly places throughout. This. Yes, and the word I don't have it written down this time, mm-hmm. but the heavenly places word isn't used all that much either right. in anything but Paul. It's one word right. for heavenlies, and it's not common to use Ephesians it, might be the it's place. basically the only place I think it's used I think Paul uses it one more time maybe Colossians I think so okay yeah if I can't remember I that was I did that last week because uh-huh. it was in there too but just that idea of like through the church God's infinitely multifaceted wisdom can be known to rulers and authorities in heavenly places so this is an important verse in the, like, okay, so I'm going to use kind of a big word here, ecclesiology. Yeah. All right? So in other words, our theology of the church. Mm-hmm. It's a big word. Now, I'm not here to prop up the church necessarily. Like, I don't think we have, because the church saith thus it is. Yeah. Right? That, that's not what I'm talking about at all. But we are gods. We are the bride of Christ who mm-hmm. is our groom. And that matters. And our togetherness matters. And I think too often, church has become kind of a lazy understanding. I'm not saying we're lazy as the church, although we could probably fall into that sometimes. But I think our the idea of church becomes lazy. And it's like a club or an experience it become, I mean, or an event. It becomes, I go on Sunday. Uh-huh. We do song, song, sermon, communion, song. And then I go to lunch. And then I go back next week. How many times have you heard someone say, I don't get anything out of church? I don't have enough time in the day to tell you the number of times I've heard that. Probably polypoikolos times, right? <laughs> Much, many <laughs> times. Much, many times. Manifold amount of times. I, if the purpose of the church was for me to get something out of it, uh, then the church has let me down more times than it has lifted me up. But the purpose of the church is that the church gets something from me. Mm -hmm. Ask not what your church can do for you. Ask what you can do for your church. Correct. And it's not even ours. Yeah. (laughs) Like, we we don't get to decide what what Jesus' bride gets to be. Yeah. So this is how I wrote this down. Through the church, the very existence of the church as one body and our togetherness Re- it reveals, she reveals God's wisdom to the powers, right? Um, when Jesus really initiates the idea, uh, and this is what, Matthew 16, I think, and Peter makes the great confession that you are the Christ, you mm-hmm. know, and, and he says that upon this confession, I'm going to build my church. And then he says, and not even the gates of Hades are going to stand against it. That's the reference here, Yeah, I think. That do we want to overcome? Well, we do that as the church. Mm-hmm. We do that. That's the identity we are, right? We are never not the church. We never leave service and say, okay, church is done. That's just terrible theology. Yeah, church isn't a building nor a service. It is. This is why a pandemic can't stop yeah. the church when we understand what the church is. Yeah. Right. And especially today when we have access to it. Mm-hmm. Um, 
We are constantly the church. But I'm, with that, I'm also not the one responsible for saving everybody because mm-hmm. I can't do that because I'm not the Christ. <laughs> I'm the church. Yeah, you're the, yeah, you could almost say you are the, uh, econ- you're the economy, you're the administrator. Yes. Of the thing that has saved. Exactly. Of the one who has saved. That, and that's it. That's, yeah. a, that's all this. Now, we have to find some profound freedom in that, mm-hmm. some profound freedom in that, that I can walk into the fellowship. I can, I can exist into the fellowship, and all I have to say, all I have to do is answer the question, how can I serve today? Or how can I bless today? Mm-hmm. And here's the bizarre thing, okay, because this is where it's completely countercultural to what you and I live in and what our listeners live in right now. We've been taught our entire lives that you're an individual, um, you need to take care of yourself. Uh, we talk about the differences all the time, more than we talk about what we have in common. By the way, what we have in common is the blood of Christ. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, and so we talk about that all the time, and that seeps into our ecclesiastical understanding, our church understanding. Um, and if that's the case, if I, if my sole job is to look after me, and your sole job is to look after you, and everyone, we only look after ourselves we'll be fine, okay, we'll be fine, but aren't we kind of tired of being fine? And so when we talk about then the economy of God's, of God, Mm -hmm. right, if I am looking after you and I'm looking after you and you and you and you, and then all those are looking after me also, that blessing is infinitely more, Yeah. right? If we want to talk strictly numbers, we have 1,400 people show up here and 1,399 of them are looking after my best interest, that's 1,399 or 1,398 more people than it is to follow culture. Yeah. Um, That's significantly more powerful. That's why it's called a gift, right? It's why it's something we receive. We get into the next chapter. That's why they're called spiritual gifts, Mm -hmm. right? Like your spiritual gift really isn't your gift. It's mine. (laughs) And theirs, yeah, it, be, because it's some it's it it's it's something that goes through you, not lands in you mm-hmm. or stops with you. Um, and I also think that's why we can continue to call it an economy because it's current. It, it's it's a movement. That's powerful. Oh yeah, uh, that that's that's really 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 powerful. So we we aren't to be isolated in that. God's wisdom is not singular. It's Many much. Yeah. It's multifaceted. (laughs) Many minis. Many minis. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we get to verse 11 then. Say, we want to lump 11 and 12 together I think we need to to end this sentence. This was according to the eternal purpose that he he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay. What God has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. Yep. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. Make sure I hit those highlights. Yeah. Yes. So he hit some buzzwords here, mm-hmm. right? So our eternal purpose, 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 intent, 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 identity, identity, identity. Um, so his eternal purpose has always been like this. Um, but the, I think the phrase that we need to kind of pay attention to here is the freedom of access. Yes. Right? That, that we have access with confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, so access with confidence is, again, one word. Freedom of confidence, uh, freedom of access, yeah, without restraints, um, and it's done in relational terms. Yeah, okay. faith in Him. Yeah, mm-hmm. come as you are, right? And I, my favorite phrase about the church is that is to come as you are. Now you're not going to stay that way. Like if you really do participate with the church, you won't stay that way. But that's good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that, that that that's a that's that's a real big deal. That's a that's a thing, mm-hmm. right? So come as you are. You're just not going to stay that way. Yep. Yeah. Be transformed. Yeah. Uh, I just, I get hung up on that for good reasons. Not mm-hmm. like hung up because it's hard, but the boldness and access with confidence because of through our faith in him. Like yeah. that's it. Again, there's nothing you have to do. Like yeah. You don't come in, write down your social security number and blood type, and then you have access to anything. My it's, offering doesn't have to be better than your offering. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to wear a suit and tie. Right. I can come as I am. Or weird robes. Yeah. 
free access. Yeah. It's just who you are gets to be good enough. Yeah. Come be loved. Mm-hmm. And you'll know you're loved because then you go love also. Yep. That, that's how you know you've received that love. Those, those were his two big sentences. Mm-hmm. He ties it up kind of nice and tidy here. Uh, so I ask you to lo- uh, ask you <laughs> not to lose yeah. heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. Uh, now, we could build a whole sermon out of that one short sentence. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it ties back into uh, uh, verse 2, really. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming you've heard of the stewardship of the grace of God that I've been given, right? So you've heard of that. Don't lose heart then. Don't yeah. lose heart. I'm suffering, and they think the enemy thinks it's because of his doing. No, I'm suffering because of what God is actually doing. Yeah. And, Which is wild. <laughs> yeah. And this is such a link, like it is such a link to the first, like you said, um, I'm a prisoner on your behalf, uh-huh. effectively. And then <laughs> to end with, but don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, okay. Just to give you a little context here. Paul's probably in Roman custody for somewhere between three and four years mm-hmm. at this point uh, with no end in sight, okay? And the church is going boom mm-hmm. like this. So to stop this Christian movement, let's get rid of Paul. Okay, we'll get rid of Paul. No big deal. It's for their glory that you get rid of me Yeah. because <laughs> here we go. Just to wrap up, these are the major themes that we covered in this section here. Um, We talk about the plan of God, which is a household, a divine household, right? Um, This divine economy is God's plan, um, and it's centered on Christ. Uh, We talk about uh, the gospel or the good news for all. Uh, All have access through faith. We talked about God's wisdom, which is a major theme here, and then just this kind of isolated thing here, this suffering, which sort of bookends the whole teaching anyway, and the role of suffering, which Suffering always preludes glory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so that's that's kind of what we have in that section. Yeah. Uh, I just want to tack on this just because it's a fun fact. Yeah. I'm sure you have it down too. The term to lose heart. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to know because mm-hmm. it's one word. Yeah. Uh, and it can also be translated grow weary in the ESV. They translate it don't lose heart or don't grow weary. Right. And it is literally like a warrior who shrinks from his responsibility, like a cowardly person, like a warrior in the face of danger shrinking back and he's saying don't like you're you're in the midst of it don't uh-huh. shrink back anyway, it's all good well and, th- and and think about all those phrases you just said too because they don't make sense together yeah okay you, you can't grow weary weariness is not a growing it's a shriveling or yeah. a shrinking right yeah so you can't grow that a warrior to be a warrior is not to shy back mm-hmm. you can't do it yeah. it's, it's such a bizarre ironic uh concept yeah. and it is one word <laughs> and, and it's egg hacking like yes e-g-k yes I use egg. yeah egg. It, like our ug yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. don't uh, don't uh, yeah. Uh, yeah no S- you're you're good this is all because of god's blessing here. yeah this is all because are you in a hard time it's okay yeah you got god's blessing here Suffering always preludes glory. Yeah. Suffering always preludes glory. So good. Yeah, it's a good point. It's a fun talk. I, I enjoy that passage. Yeah. yeah, it's a good little bit. So uh, close my Bible too soon. That is it from us mm-hmm. for this session. Next week is three fourteen through the end, which is verse twenty one. So three fourteen through twenty one is next week. Uh, and if, if you have any questions, comments, concerns about what we've talked about, what we talked about in previous episodes, mm-hmm. what we're talking about next week. Email me at Samuel O at SouthRockChristian.com. He's Nick P at SouthRockChristian.com. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. See you guys.